Welcome to the Atlantico podcast, where we talk about the science behind the Atlantico project, the Atlantic Ocean, and the human adventures experienced along the way. Here, we have conversations with guests from around the world who work together so that we can better understand, manage, and protect the ocean. So let's embark on the journey of Atlantico and discover the world that lies above and beneath the surface of the beautiful Atlantic Ocean. Today's episode was recorded when Marta came to visit down in Naples in Italy. Our face-to-face conversation was recorded in a in a busy city with a lot more background sound than usual when recording. As a result, the sound quality of this episode is probably not as good as other episodes, but hopefully you will still get to enjoy our conversation and learn more about Marta and her activities. Hello and welcome back to the podcast. Today I have the pleasure to have a conversation with Marta Musso. She's going to share with us her passion for plankton and her activities in sharing the knowledge on marine sciences. So Marta, welcome to the podcast. It's a pleasure to have you here today. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here and uh, it's a lovely day. And it's so nice to be here and talk about our passion, the ocean. Yes, it is indeed. So, before we go into uh, deeper topics or into specific topics, we like to get to know our guests on the podcast. So, can you tell us about how you connected with the ocean, where that passion started for you, and then your journey to where you are today? Absolutely. So, I'm 24 and I'm a marine biologist and uh, an illustrator. And my passion, well, I was really lucky because I was born by the sea and I was brought up by the sea. So the sea was my playground and uh, I was sailing a lot when I was a kid and with my grandparents. And so I was always by the sea and in the sea and it was such a fascinating environment. I couldn't stop like exploring it and mm. uh, finding something new in it. It was kind of as exploring a new planet or a new like environment. So that's what brought me closer to the ocean. And uh, since then, it's been <laughs> my, my, my thing, and I, I couldn't do anything else, honestly. Yeah, so from when you were a kid to where you are now, so you chose to study marine biology, right? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I mean, I wanted to be a scientist when I was a kid, I knew that. I didn't know I wanted to be a marine biologist, and obviously it changed along the way. Um, but the more I grew up, the more I realized the ocean w- was uh, what I wanted to study. And obviously it changed because like before studying marine biology, I wanted to study whales and communication in whales. And then I ended up studying plankton, which is quite <laughs> funny, quite the opposite. Quite the opposite, yeah, the talk about opposite end of the scales there, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. From the invisible to the extremely visible. Yeah, yeah excellent. So... Um, Let's talk maybe a little bit about your project, the POSI project. So it is an outreach program or project that you you have set up. So can you tell us about it? Yeah, absolutely. So it all started with my desire to like share my passion because uh, when I was doing research, I felt like something was missing. I couldn't communicate it as much. Um, and I loved it so much to work in a lab, but I couldn't share it with other friends people, other friends and stuff. So I decided to start um, doing communication and outreach and last year I, I did it on a sailboat and then when that project ended I, I wanted to do it on land as well to like reach more people and so I went to Germany, got a postman, a <laughs> yellow postman and that's my kind of uh, mean of travel. <laughs> And then I wanted to make it into a sea lab and a sea library. And that's what Posea kind of is. So Posse or Posea is post from the sea because it's a post office van. Yeah. Um, and the idea is to bring the message of the ocean around. Uh, so kind of being the Postilla del Mar, the mm. post office yeah, <laughs> yeah, from yeah. the sea. Which I kind of like, and uh, the idea of traveling around being also uh, a drifter kind of thing, right? And drifting around bringing spreading the ocean word um, yeah nice so what what happens when you do you go to different places do you have um, like events set up is it for kids is it for everybody that's 
That's the idea. So I hopefully going to start in October. So I'm still working on the, um, the camper van, mm -hmm. whatever. And um, yes, the idea is to travel around and do la workshop with kids uh, mainly, but also with adults because yeah. I do really love it when adults get involved as well. And they do act as kids, which is lovely. It's so beautiful to see them, like so fascinated about something that they don't know. Mm -hmm. um, so I do want to be open to both. Uh, the next generation but also adults yeah. Um, because yeah it's something new for everyone and then I want to do that and also kind of um, find a way to create a network when I go around about like people my age like uh, around 18 30 uh, like working on the sea and kind of like creating this network along the way um, mm -hmm. of people that want to really get involved in doing something concrete like positive for the sea and maybe doing a startup or something uh, for the ocean locally but also with a global like impact yeah nice so you're going to build a, a, your own sort of ecosystem on yeah, land exactly. it's of, like a little uh, island that floats around <laughs> yeah yeah like-minded people that want to get involved in in sharing the knowledge and and contributing I guess as well so Absolutely. if anybody wants to join anybody listening wants to join then they uh, yeah. will put your contact information you know at the end in the show notes and um, so you have this project which which is going to start soon but you also as you mentioned when we started you do illustrations so can you tell us a little bit more about that yeah so I was actually talking about it yesterday and it told me so you're an illustrator and I was like actually no <laughs> <I'm up. laughs> so I'm not an illustrator but it's something that I really love and it's something that I had when I was a kid trying as everyone does I think they they just draw or doodle or mm. it's such a creative way to express yourself and yeah. it's so visual and it's so simple and I kind of got back into it last year and I I realized how important it is to put it in, a, in something visual because doing an illustration as simple as it can be is really for everyone when because sometimes when you talk about something or you write it down not everyone can understand it because language is it's difficult and it's super specific but an, an image an illustration is for everyone and everyone to understand and to get it and it's it can be funny and it can be also a creative part that you put in that and you put a little bit of yourself but also a bit of your work and your passion so yeah i do love doing my illustration part uh, that i made up yeah <laughs> but it works quite well um, oh i've seen them they're they're really good and really accessible drawings and i think even more important because you draw things that we can't actually see by by the naked eye you know so absolutely. i think it brings it yeah. to to reality yeah the idea of making something that is invisible visible and also kind of a character you know i love making uh, i love making the plankton a character because we we don't we can't see it and most of us don't really know what it looks like and we have this picture of like maybe the plankton from spongebob which is really ugly and like not yeah. nice you know it's the evil character but then if you make it in something nice that um, people can kind of empathize with that's uh, that's my Aim. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and we had the pleasure to collaborate with you for World Microbiomes Day. Yes. You know, we used some of your illustrations that shows the cycle yeah. of different organisms, like the the way they change their shape and morphology uh, as they evolve, and it's uh, it's fascinating to you know yeah. to, to kind of guess from one type of shape of yeah. what it will turn into so yeah uh, yeah it's crazy and honestly it's something that i love the, the cycle of life in this like from the microbiome to the bigger animal because it's something that really connects us to the plankton as well because it's something that feels so far away mm. but then when you talk about this like kind of kindergarten of like the the crabs or fishes and, and then people can relate to it and they're like oh then I've seen a plankton because I've seen like a muscle and once it was a, a plankton at some point of his life and it's nice to see this evolution which looks like a little bit like Pokemon you know yeah and it's something that kids can relate to as well and it's a it's a nice evolution and um yeah, it's. I really find it fascinating how they yeah. change. Yeah, I find it fascinating. I'm. I'm. I'm not a kid, but uh, I yeah, want to get involved as well. You know, There's I want no to. Need to, be yeah. to be fascinated about the ocean. That's brilliant. Um, and this year, actually, you've been nominated as the Donna de la Mare by UNESCO. So. How was that for you? How does that feel? That was super unexpected and super exciting. I have to say. Um, 
I'm super honored to be like Dana del Mare and it's it's not about the work, you know, it's more about the being part of this family of um, the ocean decade and the, the ocean generation. It's so beautiful because we're all working together, like from different subjects, from different interests, all in the same kind of boat to work for the sea, which is so beautiful. And you really feel part of this network, this family, and we're all, all kind of working together to do events, but actually like do con like proper stuff that can have an impact on the next generation, which is really beautiful. So yes, I'm super honored and uh, it's so nice to work with them. Yeah, that sounds really good. And uh, maybe to, to end on that note, um, if you had to share a message with that next generation, what would you, what would you want to say to them? Um, I would say explore and observe and share. That's like my they're, they're my main point because it's like observe is more than looking. Like when we look at the sea, it just looks like a blue pool, you know. Mm. I mean, it feels like there's nothing inside. But when you actually observe, you spend time there and you actually uh, want to know more and get more involved. And you learn that it's so rich and so important for us as well. And we are part of it, and even if we live so far away, everything we do is linked to it, and we're part of this ecosystem, so we're part of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, and yeah, and explore, go outside and explore and see and uh, get to know it and get to know the environment in which you live in, mm -hmm. because the environment is not something that's apart from us, but it, it is us. Yeah, um, definitely. And then share it with as many people as you can, because that's what makes it. Um, makes it good, you know, because as, as long as we share it with other people, then we kind of um, get them also to know this beauty and to protect it together and to act together because uh, I learn we can't do much, but together we can do so much more. We can do indeed. That's a, a beautiful way to, to end our conversation. If people want to reach out to you, then uh, they can... Give me a call, give me a text. <laughs> give me a, a call, a text. And then, of course, you've got your Instagram account, yes. uh, which is at Pussia. Yes. Uh, we'll put the exact spelling in the, in the show notes. I invite you to go and, and check it out. Some beautiful drawings there and uh, uh, some really important information shared on your account. So... Again, thank you so much for spending time with us today, sharing your story and sharing your activities. It has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much, honestly. Thank you. We hope that you've enjoyed today's episode and look forward to seeing you next time. You can follow the Atlantico project on our website on www.atlantico.eu. And you can also find us on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. All the links and information on the project and on today's episode is in the show notes. Atlantico is a project funded under Horizon 2020, a European Union research and innovation programme.